But let's continue our conversation with Jessie Jane Duff. She's a senior fellow with the London Center for Policy Research. She is a U.S. Marine gunnery sergeant. Also joining us is uh, Gadi Adelman, a counterterrorism expert. Gadi joins us via Skype and with me on set, Jake Novak, our resident political and business analyst. Uh, Gadi, I want to start with you because the timing of this is interesting. This happened whilst uh, we had the people in Gaza demonstrating against the Hamas leadership. There were protests against the dire living conditions that uh, Hamas uh, puts on uh, the civilians and the Gaza Strip. The, the protests uh, turned violent, reports that security forces uh, arrested some of those mm -hmm. protesters. And uh, Gadi, this also comes as an Egyptian delegation was meeting in Gaza trying to mediate some kind of ceasefire between Israel and Hamas. And another unusual aspect all of this, Gadi, is that both Hamas and Islamic Jihad have denied responsibility for this attack. Again, very unusual for these terrorist groups to not want to take credit. So what do you make of the timing? Well, obviously, it you know, has to do with the upcoming election. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Gadi, go ahead. It has to do with the upcoming election, no doubt, and, and they're pushing the buttons. But, you know, regardless of who was behind this, be it, and I, and I personally don't believe that Hamas was behind this, but having said that, Hamas does run the Gaza Strip, and solely they are responsible for everything that happens within Gaza. So regardless of whether it was the Islamic Jihad or, you know, Al-Quds or who it was that was behind this actual attack, Hamas bears all responsibility. Gadi, sticking with you, why do you not think Hamas was responsible here, Gadi? Hamas, at the time that this rocket attack occurred, was actually sitting down in a meeting with the mediators from right. Egypt, as you mentioned. They were actually together at that time and immediately came out and stated that not only were they not behind it, but they would go and investigate to see who was behind it and take uh, action against them. So. Given the fact that Hamas does not want a, an escalation right now, I don't believe Hamas was behind it. Uh, Jesse Jane Duff, uh, let's bring you into this conversation. Uh, we do know that, or at least the reports, that the, the rockets were Fajar 5 rockets. Those are Iranian-made rockets. What do you think uh, could be Iran's role in all of this? Iran, of course, a backer of both Hamas and Islamic Jihad. You know, the, the the Iranians want to have a play in any part of destruction of Israel. So whatever terror group that is willing to take their weapons or their power, they're going to provide to. Even if they're factions that fight against each other, the Iranians don't really care what their issues are other than dissolving Israel. So when we look at this particular missile, it is considered the, web, the uh, favorite missile of choice by Hamas, which makes me somewhat lenient to think that Hamas is behind it. It is a major distraction during these uh, protests that were going on, because when they start losing the confidence of people in their own community and they're uprising against Hamas, Hamas cannot turn around and destroy their own people. So essentially, this potentially was a distraction by their part to show Israel that they're still there, but they don't want to take claim for it and have the people now scramble and skirt and hide because they're expecting a retaliatory strike by Israel. Now, the Islamic Jihad had called out Hamas for doing this. And yes, the Egyptians were there trying to resolve the conflict with Israel. But meanwhile, they weren't probably expecting to have their own people demonstrate and protest in front of the Egyptians. So I think that Hamas is really good under chaos in that way that they can circumvent any blame that comes their way. They can claim that they had nothing to do with this. But either way, it is backed by, it is backed by Iran. Iran is the force of all evil in the Middle East. Uh, Jake, we are waiting to get some kind of official response from the Trump administration. We have heard uh, from Jason Greenblatt, the Middle East envoy to the region. He uh, putting the blame on Hamas. What do you expect to hear from the Trump administration? And is this an issue that will have a bipartisan support in terms of support for Israel here? Well, Michelle, there must be a great temptation for President Trump based on what he said last week, calling the Democrats an anti-Israel party and an anti-Jewish party in response to the Elon Omar controversy. There must be great temptation for him tonight to come out with a very pro-Israel statement and talk about how he has that relationship with Prime Minister Netanyahu. I think that right now, if there's anything stopping him from doing that, it might just be, as I said before, perhaps he actually does want to talk to uh, Netanyahu first before he says anything. But honestly, I think this is a huge test for the Democratic leadership. Now, they 
passed that watered down resolution last week. I am very much just as much as we're looking for President Trump to say something. I'm waiting to hear something from Nancy Pelosi. Not so much from Chuck Schumer because he's always been a big strong supporter of Israel. I don't, I don't expect. I want to see something from Nancy Pelosi, see what she has to say about this. And if they wait until tomorrow or waiting for a couple of days, I don't think that that's that's an opportunity that they will have missed. Right now, we'll see who who's more tempted by this opportunity to say something that will show their support for Israel. Of course, at this playing against the political landscape of Israel at the moment is a. Uh Israelis that get sent to go to the polls. And uh, we've heard from uh, some of uh, the right members, uh, Naftali Bennett, uh, leader of the New Right Party, asking or rather demanding that Netanyahu takes uh, a tougher response here. Let's take a listen. And this continues about a year of uh, rockets shot from the Gaza Strip on the citizens of uh, southern Israel. It's time to defeat Hamas. It's time to act and unilaterally demilitarize Hamas in order to defend Israeli citizens. Uh, Gadi, uh, very quickly, this puts pressure on Netanyahu. What are the military options for Netanyahu here? Given the fact that the elections are so close, uh, I agree with your correspondent on the ground there. It is extremely unlikely that Israel is going to send troops on the ground. I think this is going to all be airstrikes, possibly some uh, strikes from tanks and things of that sort closer to the border. But I don't think we're going to see anyone. He's not going to do that right before the election. The Israelis don't like sending their boys off to war, and, and this is no different. However, on the other hand, Netanyahu did make it very clear, and we discussed this on your show the other night, that anything that Hamas does or anything that comes out of the Gaza Strip, they're going to feel back with retaliatory strikes four times the amount. So I think we're going to see a much larger retaliation this time, but I do not believe it's going to get to the point where we're going to have a ground incursion. Uh, Jesse, very quickly, what kind of uh, support or response do you expect from the Trump administration? Oh, absolute support for Israel. And I think this is an ideal opportunity for tr uh, President Trump to reinforce that we are allies with Israel. Because right today, we had a protest in Nancy Pelosi's office for the way they have handled the anti-Jewish comments and the anti-Semitism. And this is right on time for President Trump to make a stand again against Iran, their terrorism, Hamas, and the Palestinian attack against the Israeli people. Uh, Jake, very quickly, uh, what are the options for the IDF if it doesn't want to play into the hand of those that are clearly using this to drag Israel into a war? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm rejecting the scenario. I think that because of what's happened in Saudi Arabia, the chances of Israel getting pummeled from all over the Arab world for, uh, for a retaliatory strike have diminished somewhat. And I think this, there is going to be quiet Saudi support for whatever Israel does, because Iran now has gone from being a, a minor player to the absolute, as Jesse Jane said, the absolute mm -hmm. uh, instigator of all this. So Saudi Arabia is going to support it. They won't have to worry so much about bad publicity as much. So uh, Iran's uh, plot uh, would fail there. All right, uh, we appreciate your analysis. Thank you so much. Jake Novak, Jesse Jane Duff, and Gadi Adelman. And of course, we will continue to follow the story on I-24 News.